video, we'll talk about functions in two variables. So we'll introduce them. And you've probably seen these before. This is when you have a function like f of x, y, and what you get is some number z out of it. So in other words, there's two independent variables now, x and y, and they're being mapped onto some number z. So you might see this as a function written from uh, r squared to r. In other words, you're taking something from the x, y plane, and then you're mapping it onto just like an x plane or a y plane, just some number line. So visually, we can represent it like this. Imagine we have a graph here, where here's all of the possible inputs that you can get for your function. Like let's say this point here is x, y. What we can do is we can take this area through our function, and we can map it onto points in the real numbers. So maybe when we put uh, f of x, y, the point that we chose in our domain and r squared, this just happens to be like two, for example. But then if we take a second point, let's pick a point here, let's call this x2, y2, maybe this one maps onto this point here. So f of x2, y2 gives us a number like negative three. So this is what our functions are going to look like. So let's practice evaluating a function. And I assure you, it's no different than how you regularly evaluate functions. So let's say f of x, y is equal to x squared, y over 2x minus y squared. We want to evaluate it at f of 1, 1, f of negative 2, 3, and f of y, y. So for f of 1, 1, this just means we plug 1 into x and 1 into y. So we're going to get 1 squared times 1 divided by 2 times 1 minus 1 squared. So we're going to get 1 on the top, 2 minus 1 on the bottom, so we just get 1. This means that if we take a point 1, 1, our function is going to say that its output is just 1. Now, what if we try f of negative 2 and 3? So here we're putting negative 2 in for x and 3 in for y. So we'll get negative 2 squared times 3 divided by 2 times negative 2 minus 3 squared. So on the top, this is going to give us 4 times 3, which is 12. On the bottom, we're going to get negative 4 minus 9, which is negative 13. So this is the point that we get. If we put in negative 2, 3, the value that we get is 12 over 13, and this is negative. Now finally, we can substitute in with variables as well. So f of y, y, this is just going to give us a new function because we're dealing with variables here. So every time we see x, we're going to replace it with y. And every time we see y, we're going to keep it as y. So we're going to get y squared times y, so x squared becomes y squared, and then 2y minus y squared. So what we're going to get here is y cubed divided by, I'm going to factor a y out, to get y times 2 minus y. We can cancel a y on the top and the bottom, so it's going to be y squared over 2 minus y. And now if we were to plug in values for y here, we would get our function. Uh, we, get, we get a real number from our function. So if we put in y, y, we get a new function, which is going to be y squared over 2 minus y. So that's how we can evaluate these functions with two variables. Now, what about domains of these functions? So imagine I give you f of x, y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. We still employ the same techniques. So what we know from this is for a valid domain, because we're under the square root, we need to have 4 minus x squared minus y squared is greater or equal to 0, because we can't put negative numbers in for our domain. So we can just rearrange this, and hopefully we'll see something we're familiar with. So we'll add x squared and y squared to both sides. So 4 is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, when we have domains with two variables, 
we're going to get a domain that's not like something on a number line, but something that is in two dimensional space. So you may remember this formula. Hopefully I can draw this nicely uh, as being a circle. So this is a circle with radius two. So this goes from two to negative two in the y axis and negative two to two in the x axis. So our domain is going to come from everything inside here. This is our restrictions on what we can put into our function. So we could evaluate something like f of 1, 1 1.5, that would be fine, but we could not evaluate something like uh, f of 3 and 6. That would not be okay because those numbers do not exist in our domain here. They're outside of that domain. So this was a quick video, but uh, if you can do functions in one variable, you can do functions in two variables. It's just a matter of plugging in two values instead of one and realizing that your domains are going to exist in a two-dimensional space rather than in a one-dimensional space. So if you have any questions, you know what to do.